People are not ready for them, and people have not been ready for them so far. So let's take a look at the draft. Fusion maybe on the left, Kakelok maybe on the right. It looks like the pictures may be swapped. One of the things are swapped, but we can see immediately a Blaziken ban. Yeah, Blaziken has been hot property here today, getting the bans, but also picking on up. And it's such a great secure. Speaking of secure, Dragonite. I feel like this pick has been a little bit slept on today, but we have seen it come into popularity. So that is going to receive a ban of itself. I think that that Dragonite has really shown up a lot this tournament, especially with a lot of the Asian teams. We have seen, actually, you know what? Another Pokemon that I'm surprised to see banned, the Blastoise, has been used so well by so many of the Asian teams. Japan, APAC, they've really shown us that this Pokemon, while it did seem to fall out of the meta, is still extremely strong. Dragonite has secured so many Rayquazas this weekend. Yeah, speaking of the other surfing type Pokemon here, Slowbro out of the picture, a Shifu also rising in the ranks. We've seen both uh, that Wicked Blow and Surging Strikes there, so it'll be really interesting to see which one Kegelok chooses here. But, oh, Mamo, I can hear Zoinks from here cheering once again. <laughs> <laughs> Mamo and the Serral Edge. Serral Edge has been kind of passed up by a lot of these teams a uh, lot more recently, which is really interesting. But we have seen that Serral Edge can chase down. It can be so hard to KO. It is truly still a high tier Pokemon. But there's just so many good Pokemon that it's hard to exactly lock down what you want. Are we going to see the Clefable? This has been a support that has been passed up so often, and we're not going to see it. So forget whatever I was just about to say. Eldegoss, we've seen it throughout the day. They've now got uh, potentially, I mean, we're, they're showing this off, right? They're showing that the Umbreon will be the main defender of their team. Yeah, both rocking the experience shares there. But because Eldegoss has been picking, picked up, it looks like Kea is going to opt for the eggs, the Blissey. And ooh, do we get to see a Chandelure pick here? Look, as if one Fire Ghost type Pokemon wasn't enough, we get another Fire Ghost type. I would have Not to that expect... Type <laughs> right, right. But no, I have to expect that after this, we are going to see maybe the Scyther. They do tend to choose those two together as their final picks quite a bit. On the other side, though, the Gardevoir and the Gyarados, both the G names, and uh, honestly, they're a great combination together. And we are going to see the Scyther. Uh, this has been the signature comp, I think, of Fusion. And it's so hard to not give it to them because you're not going to ban Scyther. You're not going to ban Chandelure, really. Well, and nobody's really picking them either. I mean, some of the teams actually did some ban. Have, yes. But I guess Kekalok thinking they can handle the pressure, the slice and dice from a Nemo here. I mean, Gardevoir, they're going to have to be real well protected in that back line, not to get caught out. There is a good amount of defense. And uh, again, you mentioned earlier that we're not sure exactly which kind of Rashifu we're going to see. I'm curious which kind of Rashifu it's going to be as well. Uh, whether it's going to be a little bit more to maybe like defend some of their backline. Do you have a relatively vulnerable backline? Or whether it's going to be diving with the, uh, you know, the, the water uh, options and just kind of our final game of the top eight matches between Kekalok and Fusion to see who's going to make it into top four. Kekalok on the left, Fusion on the right in the orange. This is going to be a good one. It is. We're actually going to send both uh, the Litwick and the Rolts down in that bottom path while those all-rounders go and take the central path. Ooh, we are going to have a little uh, swing up here going for a little invade. And if we know anything about Kubfu, it cannot really do much on its own at the, such an early level, which is why we actually have the Gossip Blur to help it out. Number one most bullied Pokemon maybe in the game. They do get the final hits on the side of Kekalok, so they're not too worried about that. Small delay, but really not the worst delay in the world. Looks like they should be able to maybe get a pickup off of this. It's going to be a little bit slow, but they're running back the path anyway. Oh, that's Oh, huge. my God. Look at that bar. The effort point on that Magic Cup is almost full. And that is just before that nine-minute mark. Oh, my gosh. We have a Gyarados before nine minutes. I think this is the quickest Gyarados we have had. That is a great sign if you are Cake Kalon. Honestly, that is exactly what you want to see. This top path was going to be quite difficult once the first power spikes went off, and it's still looking pretty difficult. We do see an ammo coming up. That's a lot of damage, especially for somebody who wants to be in close. But Gyarados, very survivable, able to jump out of there, able to survive. We still don't see the Eldegoss. Some points will go in, but they're not getting KO'd quite yet. Oh, no. We do have that bounce just to give the Gyarados a little bit of shielding. However, Blissey and Sarah Leech have taken a trip into that flux zone to go and finish the job that the Scyther wasn't able to. Dunking in more points, leaving it on 11 out of 80. Just got to get those stacks in. That is a lot of stacks, a lot of points going in. 
They were able to get the return KO, though, and that's going to be super important as far as kind of staying on pace, especially when you did evolve so early with Gyarados. You want to try and push that advantage, but right now, they're just getting chased down. Tempo going all the way, trying to catch Eldegoss. Not quite going to be able to. In fact, the return jump, as we're going to be seeing Gyarados get at least a lot of damage, getting one KO altogether. Looks like there's a chance to run away. Are they going to try to turn around? That's so risky. Oh, they're going to slice him up to half HP. However, that Pollen Puff isn't going to take down that Scyther. Instead, they're just going to try farm on up a little bit more before we move on forward. But I mean, looking so far, it is quite even. We finally have uh, the Swin Up, or the Swin Up evolving into that Kylo Swine, reaching level five, which I think is the one that was falling a little bit behind there. And we got to be careful up there. Big bounce, yeah, into the tall grass. And Emo getting caught out. Scyther, very easy to kind of jump on and KO. It has a little bit of mobility, but it just is not super reliable at all. It's a true speedster once you can actually catch it. A little bit more range than I think a lot of other speedsters, but it was able to get out of there. Luckily, not a huge follow-up. It did have to back up a little bit. Good healing, though, from the Blizzard. Yes, you've got it. Stick by your team. Make sure to replenish those HP pools with the eggs. Um, but we do have both of those objectives spawning. Uh, and Nemo is on a different objective, being that of the Umbreon. However, they are able to make it out of the way. I will say Nemo had to kind of spin around a lot and like chase a lot of people and didn't really get too much out of it. They should be able to get this Regilecki. Yep, they will. Perfect timing for that last hit. So finally they find something that they can KO. But they really want to try to break this before the Regilecki goes in. Unfortunately, the Regilecki will go down. Or sorry, not go down, but take the goal zone down. They should be able to get a lot of points into this tier too. That's actually huge. 66 points. Yeah, who needs a Reggie Alecki to crash into tier 2? The fact that they were able to clear that space, empty out their pockets. All the meanwhile, we do have the other team going and securing themselves that basement. Reggie, another 40 points. Goes down in the bottom half. So Cake Lock are slowly climbing here as we do have uh, Scyther just slicing on up. Gyarados is quick to shut it down, though. That felt like a huge risk to go for that. I mean, you do have sustain, but you've got to assume that nobody else is going to jump in there and get the KO. And the KO on you as a carry, as Scyther, is so much bigger than getting the KO on just the support that you're chasing down like that Umbreon. So, interesting choice. But Anemo still leading the pack at level 10 by a good amount. Uh, Fusion, though, does have a point lead as well, so they can just continue to kind of hold tight. they got to be careful, though, not to trade too many KOs like that. Yeah, exactly. You do not want to pass over the experience over to the opposite side. But I mean, you've got to look at these teams. There's hardly any yellow dots on the map. So they are just uh, able to wipe out all the wild Pokemon as quickly as possible. However, Spoo is able to uh, get themselves out of the way. A little bit of a heal um, as we do have Fusion backing on up here. Yeah, a lot more patience, I think, coming out once they started to realize, okay, the other team can actually fight back. But as I say that, immediately a member of Cake-A-Lot going in, Umbreon, yeah, I'm sorry, not Umbreon, uh, <laughs> there's too many Unite. Urshifu getting hit quite hard, big whiff. Uh, not really see necessarily a whiff on the Unite from the Gardevoir, but there was just an immediate eject button out. It was only targeting one person to begin with, so it felt like a big whiff. And now you're not going to have that to defend this goal zone. They're just going to walk onto it. I like the spacing from Dragon. They are going to at least be able to let them get in a few points. And now another KO is they're just going to churn and bully. Big Unite coming out from the Scyther. It's going to dive all the way into the back line. But Gardevoir and Eldegoss both extremely healthy. And right now, Battlegoss is chasing down Animo. Yeah, trying to get the KO. However, Animo is just all too powerful at a level 12, being able to take down that Eldegoss. Top pad has been depleted. Serilich has just secured themselves a Reggie Alecki, which is actually heading towards home base. Cake Lock, it looks like they're going to try and take down this basement. Reggie, as we do have members scattering around, seeing if they can try and defend. That's tough. This is a really rough situation, especially because we did see that the time the Cake Lock won before was due to really smart kind of scoring play. And unfortunately, when you're this far behind, there's not really that much you can do that's smart as far as scoring. You just gotta play tier out, so we're gonna see a different style from Cake Lock for the rest of this game. Only a minute and oh, just under two minutes, I should say, two of the two minute mark. Big break without getting very much of an overdunk, but they're already ahead by so much. Fusion's gotta be happy with just getting the space. Yeah, it just stops that healing uh, for Cake Lock there and also gets rid of that additional Flux Zone. So Fusion taking more progression of that map, able to go into their central area a little bit more easily later on. Look at this chase. I don't think you're going to chase Enderbron. Yeah, yeah. So literally jumped back. That was a little bit unnecessary. But 
I do like it. We are going to get a little bit of a convergence here. Eldegoss is going to unite to get out, I think that was. And unfortunately, not everybody's going to be able to catch anybody. Just a lot of like, hey, do you want to fight? Do you want to fight? Do you want to fight? I think Gyarados wants to fight. Once again, look at that. They're just kind of poking at each other to see if there's a moment of weakness. As we're a minute away, you really don't want to expense too many of your resources. There's going to be one very important Regilecki. I think, as Cake Lock, you cannot let Fusion take this Regilecki. No, it's a bit of a staring competition, trying to see who blinks first. Gyarados did end up bouncing on in, but once again, they are not actually going to commit to the fight. Yeah, uh, I mean, you just can't at this point, I think. It would be a big mistake, especially when you're down just slightly. Well, no, actually, levels have started to even up, it looks like. This could be a very, very good final fight. I think it could even potentially happen around this Regielec. It's so all-important for Fusion. That's one of the bingo cards from the uh, Pokemon Unite Esports socials, is Regielec going into a home goal zone. And the goal here for Fusion is for that to happen. Already starting to do some damage to it from Animo, just sitting up there, not really getting harassed, but the moment that I think it gets low, we might see a huge jump, and the oh. jump's gonna come already from Gyarados, trying to make them back up, and look at that. The Fusion says, no, this is not worth our attempt. We're down to only a few seconds left anyway. Forget it, right way to disengage. Yeah, really interesting there to just let it on go, not wanting to commit to the fight once again. They just want to hold that uh, advantage that they have. They are at 317 to 120 points. So Cakelock have their backs against the wall. They're the ones that need to make a move. And speaking of moves, we have Gyarados looking uh, for a back cap up in the top half, while we do have Umbreon and Eldegoss trying to see if they can keep eyes on the rest of Fusion. And another big back cap from the other direction as Sarah Edge is going to get an 84 into the bottom uh, tier two. But Rayquaza is actually starting to get burned down. There's a lot of strong, secure, Big jump into the back line, and that's going to be immediately the Gardevoir going down. All important, Ooh. and that Chandelure immediately gets that secure as almost all, actually all oh. of Cake Kalak, let me correct myself, go down in the blink of an eye. Yes, they are the ones that just won that staring contest throughout this match, securing themselves that Rayquaza shield. Chandelure being able to just turn out the lights and burn and shred with the rest of the team. It's now 220 to 837 with less than 50 seconds on the clock. I'd say this one may be in the books. I mean, with 40 seconds left, you need to score more than 100. Um, well, yeah, you need more than Hundo Burgers in every single person's pocket. So at this point, I think they're just fighting for fun. But Fusion going with that comp that they've been loving so much, and it's looking very strong. Oh, an interesting way to kind of engage in that last fight where they just burned down everything all at once. Final hit from a Chandelure. A little bit unexpected, I would say, especially considering who else they have, but still a very good option. They knew exactly what they were doing. They planned it out well. They timed it out well. And they have a huge lead winning game number one of their top eight set. Well, they do have somebody on their name called Tempo, so they're able to keep that Tempo in check. But, oh my gosh, I must say, is this why that Cypher has been banned previously by other teams that have gone against Fusion? It, I mean, certainly is. Uh, uh, Animo, known as, I would say, probably the best Scyther player that we know of, at least. There may be some other players that just kind of hide it, but uh, as far as tournament results, without a doubt, the best Scyther player. And it does sometimes not work out too well, but a lot of the time, as we've seen this weekend, it is just so dominant. Teams do not have an answer. And I think one thing might be that people just don't really know how to... F it's very difficult to say that you want to ban Scyther, that you want to ban Chandelure. It's very difficult to steal either of those Pokemon away. You may have a Chandelure player, highly doubt you have a Scyther player. So, what will you do? Current first ban is going to go to Blaziken once again, not changing. Yeah, and we do have that Dragonite ban once again as well for Fusion. So two all-rounders out of the picture, but we know there's so many all-rounders to, to select from. Um, so not too bad. Otherwise, you're talking about lockdown. Onto the Scyther. Slowbro has been taken away from Cake Lock, so that could have been an answer, but I guess they just do not want to give it over to Fusion. Blastoise once again as well. Yeah, the same bands from the side of Fusion. Two strong Pokemon that, uh, well, I would say two Pokemon that were not expected to be super strong in the meta, but have shown up this weekend very well. And uh, they're not going to show up this match because they are not allowed to show up this match. So first pick, Urshifu. Uh, very high priority on that when it's usually quite capable of being picked a little bit later on. But I suppose if you take the Blaziken and, or sorry, ban the Blaziken and take the Urshifu, you've got a plan. 
Yes, we'll have to see what the rest of the plan is to answer back to the Serilidge and this Mamoswine. Serilidge just being sneaky, being able to use that Phantom Force to a, a lot of the time to perfection to dodge a lot of the moves from Kakerlock. Um, it was intense. Tempo, we've been talking about this. Tempo is without a doubt one of the best players in the world. I think certainly in contention for that title, uh, and especially with the results this season. But just as far as just like visually looking at one player, incredible player. I think I said earlier they're worth two players themselves. But uh, Umbreon and Krussel taken, it uh, does seem to imply that we will be seeing a support Umbreon and Defender Krussel. But actually, we could see some top path Krussel shenanigans. I'm not sure yet. Look, maybe just try and build the walls, cut them on out. But we are going in for more brawlers here, locking down that guard jump and mimic you pick. So there's actually no range on the side of Cake Lock here. Yeah, not at all. Well, I mean, I guess you can kind of shadow sneak as range, kind of. But oh, I guess I have realistically, <laughs> not no. any. Yes. Uh, and, but on the other side, I like that. We had the opportunity to go for the Scyther. The Scyther doesn't have as many juicy targets this time around, but Animo, not only playing one bug, but playing two bugs uh, very well over the course of this weekend and the rest of the season. This buzz wall is such a good answer when somebody's trying to brawl with you, you just completely stop them. You just pick them up, you dunk them, you plant them in the ground like a tree, and you say, you know what? You get a turn when you come back from your home goal zone after you respawn. Yeah, I think that's a good answer, considering we might end up seeing this Mimikyu head up into the top half. So they don't really want to select anything that needs an evolution, um, which could get shredded down by that Mimikyu. I'm interested to see where yeah. Kevlock actually ends up going. We did see the Cup Boot take the central area this time around, but are they going to prioritize giving it to the Garchomp instead? Yeah, I mean, if you really look, uh, if we look at which Pokemon we've seen, let's just say even in the top path. Urshifu could go top path, Umbreon could go top path, Russell could go top path, Garchomp could go top path, Mimikyu could go top path. Uh, you could go say, what could go center? You could keep on that for, for a long time. That bit is far too long, but not likely for some of them, but we have seen them in tournament play in UCS. So their split is going to be really interesting. Where they decide to send people, uh, specifically to me, I'm curious where the Garchomp's going to go. Obviously very, very EXP hungry, but where do you send them? Yeah, that's the thing. It is experience hungry in comparison to that Cub Food and Mimikyu. But all of these answers will soon, all these questions will soon be answered as we are about to head on into round two, Kakerlock versus Fusion. If Fusion ends up taking this match, they are going to join the other three in the top four finalists. Well, we're going to have to see a big adaptation from Kate Kalok if they want to stop it. Animo already moving forward, going for stacks, saying, oh, you're going for stacks, I'm going for Kate Kalok, if they want to stop it. Animo already moving forward, going for stacks, saying, oh, you're going for stacks, I'm going for stacks, let's just all go for stacks. And almost getting an immediate KO here on the Mimikyu. They are going to get those points in. They're going to back up. They might be KO'd for this. Mimikyu can do quite a bit of damage, but it's pretty scary. Trying to beat him out a little bit further. Get the dunk, but oh, not going to be enough. Big first KO here for the side of Kate Kalok. Yeah, such an early KO as well. And I feel like that is the definition of in for stacks. They've got the one. They had the opportunity to back on up, but I guess they just couldn't get away from the Mimikyu claws that were slashing at them. Ooh, we almost had another KO there onto that Dweeble. However, it was able to get on out of the way, but with three members there, uh, I don't know, it has a chance. It has both of those berries, so it was actually able to survive. It still needs to a uh, little bit more XP to evolve, which is unfortunate, but uh, Draken is going to be chased down. I don't know if that check button was necessary. It does speed it up a little bit, I guess, but just making sure that there's no more shenanigans. Fusion is up by a few more points, which is just mostly important because of the top pass stacking, which we saw starting off very early. But an attempt to invade, and I really like this. This is something that we've seen from a few different teams now, from a lot of different regions, where you kind of invade a lot with an Umbreon. They're very hard to deal with. They can uh, really delay your clear by a lot, and they always have EXP shares. They just run around, be annoying, and uh, that kind of lasts for the end of the game. Yeah, they're able to heal and sustain themselves. Speaking of those defenders, though, we still have that swing up. Thankfully, does have those bundlebees behind, so it should reach level fi five quite shortly. But we do have these mid birds spawning, and it looks like Kakerlock are nowhere in sight for them. They're not even going to attempt it. There's not even that much left for them to clear. We are going to see uh, just some attempts to, I think, play a little bit safe. Fusion has a very aggressive Ooh, attempt cool. at the team, especially with those dunks. And yeah, they were very ready for that. 
that. Trying to move in with the Umbreon, but you're not really going to be able to get anything as far as damage. In fact, you might be the one KO'd. You're going to last a little bit longer. They don't even want that KO that much. They wanted the stacks. That's the most important thing for them. They want the points. That's how they won last game, and they got what they wanted. Yeah, and Noddy Zart was actually aware of that because they ended up grabbing that straight Aeos energy on the floor. Wicked Blow ends up whiffing, and we have that Pylo Spine being able to pick up that two KO streak because it didn't hit him. Now you just get, just pick him up, everybody, and dunk him. Pick him up and dunk him. He says, uh, you know, Buzzwall, you can do that. I can do that too. And gonna get a ton of points in. 30 to set up a huge overdunk on bottom. And this game is starting to look a lot like the last game. Almost a 100-point lead before the first big objective spawn. And now they're spawning. We really got to see some. Well, I was going to say some wins for Cakelock here, but already Basement Reggie taken from the side of Fusion. Big fight up top, but only Animo's going to be here. So they're not going to be able to get that really quick initial break on that top tier one, at least with the first Reggie Lendy. No, but that is going to bide some time for Cakelock to try and get the levels evened out with the wild Pokemon over on their side. Buzzwell, Eldegoss able to deal with that, but I guess considering Fusion had that Registeel buff, they just did not want to push on board. Gonna jump over into the center area. Well, there's already a little bit of a fight and really good position, I think, for Chandler to be able to engage here. That Crustle, nice eject button over the wall. Is gonna be able to at least attempt to escape. Wow, that Shadow Sneak you can see going down through the wall vertically was able to, oh, he connected. I thought it whiffed, actually. I was certain that that whiffed, but maybe uh, maybe I'm just not able to see it. That's how fast you are. Not able to get a K off of it, though, as uh, we've seen Fusion play very careful as far as the not giving up the single little picks to allow the comeback to happen. No, well, they're the ones that have the points lead. They have the level lead here. So it's just about keeping their distance, playing it safe, waiting for Cakelock to potentially make a wrong move here. Um, getting burnt on down, sent back. Uh, a Shifu isn't going to push on forward, considering there's three members of Fusion up here. And they're on the chase on the Mimic here. Um, but it's able to eject itself out of the way. Yeah, this is a scary, this is a scary team to try and push. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna call it the double dunk, right? Mamoswine says, uh, oh, Buzzwall, you wanna dunk people, I can dunk people too, but what happens when you get dunked by both of them in a row, right? That's the scary thing. It's like nobody is gonna live that long through that, so you've got to be super careful, especially if you're the Mimikyu or really, well, I was gonna say any of the melee Pokemon on the side of Cakelock, which is literally all of them, so that's why I love this draft infusion. Yeah, but we can see, see four members of Cakelock up here uh, looking to take it. Potentially this uh, top, uh, Reggie Alecki, as we do have Nodizal using their Unite move, diving onto that Buzzwall, who ends up getting taken on down. The lights have been wiped out by that Chandelure, which means Cakelock have no vision. The Midnight Knight wasn't able to actually land anything as Cakelock have decided to retreat on back, but not if Fusion have anything to say about it, as we have the Mamo sign stopping them in their tracks. Oh, the big Revenant Ren is going to catch, I believe, too. I think maybe there was an eject button out right before that. And so Crustle is getting very low, but Zynus has to get out of there. Chandler getting KO'd. And a big Unite to try and turn things around, but Unite into Dunk, SGC, SGC versus Animo. And that oh. bear is not going to be able to make it back safely to their goal zone. Big amount of KOs for Fusion and small amount of KOs for Cakelon. It is going to trade a bit of back and forth, but they are still quite behind here. Fusion able to lock down that Reggie Alecki, and this point, this goal is left on 34, so if it does crash, has that potential for a big overcap. But, oh, it does! They decided to let it go on in. Well, that is going to be, for sure, a big overdunk. Uh, they just got to decide how long they want to wait for it to actually happen. A lot of times you try to delay it as long as possible so that the EXP spawns as late as possible. There we go. We're going to see the Indeed spawn over on the side as Tempo waited until the final, just about 10 seconds of that debuff or buff. I don't know, whatever it is. I guess it's the debuff on the goal zone from the Regilecki. But, oh, uh, this is not a raid boss here. You're farming a uh, an objective, and that objective is the guard chop. But wait a minute. One KO out of three gets Oh, my God. And, oh, manages to survive. No way, that Dragon Rush combo to just give the stun, get themselves out of the way, and let the team to come on in and finish the job. Insane plays from Sensage there. I do have to say that Garchomp is scaling up really well. Every time that we've seen them within any sort of team fight, that's been when they've been getting the KOs on the side of Kalok. So 
if they can combine together eventually as we get closer to this final stretch, win one big team fight, the lead is not nearly as significant as the last game. They can absolutely make this happen. I mean, the levels in general are in the favor of Kate Kalak. It's just the points lead only for Fusion. So I think they're doing pretty well. They've just got to make sure that they don't get all clubbed together as one big melee team. They don't get zoned out. And they've got strength in this comp. Yeah. Stick together, stay together is what they must be chanting in their heads as they are about to head on into their final stretch, trying to look for that prime positioning in the tall grass, not wanting it to get caught on out. However, we did have that pollen puff exposing the Garchomp from there, along with the Crustle as well. Oh, that was really scary. That Rock Tomb was so good. And the tough part here for King Walk is they've got to make the first move as a full melee comp. If they can land one big Rock Tomb, that is going to be almost nearly a guaranteed guaranteed KO. But they've got to find it. They've got to find it on the right target. If they can catch out that Chandler, that would be everything. But if they rush in blindly, then they will end up blind as that Chandler is just going to unite. They're going to turn on them. It's going to be very difficult. And they've got to play patient. They've got to find their moment. But they've got to do it with not too much time left. Yeah, but you do have Dragon Diver not on in. They are able to use their eject button away from that Rock Tomb. So not getting caught on out. They are just trying to play with their food here, seeing if they can also get a pick on there as Boswell is looking uh, to have a feast on that Ashiva. But here we go. We're going in and diving on in, using those Unite moves. Revenant Rain going to shred on down. Two members of Cake Lock have been eliminated. Mimikyu has locked down that Chandelure. However, they didn't end up getting knocked on down, able to use that present to shut it on down and fusion have the lead with five members still left standing only two on cake lock remain umbreon is here this is a chance to steal it's the only chance but they're not there in time rayquaza getting taken by fusion they are going to get that last ko as well every member up every member with 50 points in their pocket hundo burgers across the board and only one member even up to try and defend on the side of Kate Kalak. This lead is growing and growing and growing. And with 30 seconds left, I don't think there's any chance for Kate Kalak to make it back into this game, especially not if they're getting KO'd like this. I think it is safe to say that we have your top four here. Fusion will be joining the semi-finals. Amazing as their fourth region of the semifinals as well. That's a great thing to see. They're going to be taking down game number two. Fusion moving into our top four. Congratulations. Taking down Kate Kalak, who, again, huge shout outs to Kate Kalak. Without a doubt, the underdogs, I would say, of this entire tournament. Making it to the top eight is an amazing, a crowning achievement. But they just weren't quite able to topple the undefeated champs of this entire